would take responsibility. I would own that. I'm not prime minister. Right now, Justin Trudeau is. And if he fails to bring in the sufficient amount for disability people, disability benefits for those people, he is failing those people. Hey gang, what's up? You guys all recognize old Jagmeet Singh from the introduction there? Well, this clown is not helping Canadians, insisting that he is. He's going to support the federal budget based on conditions of Trudeau's words. Doesn't sound good, guys. Vasi Kapalos does a pretty good job of putting the questions right to uh, Singh right here. And you won't like the answers, but thankfully, Vasi Kapalos is at least asking the right questions. Let's take a peek. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh there ending speculation and officially announcing that his party will support the federal budget, the first vote on which is expected later today. It's an announcement the leader made on the same day the Canada Dental Care Plan officially launched, as you heard in my interview with Minister Holland a few moments ago, a key pillar of the NDP's supply and confidence agreement with the Liberals. Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, is here live in studio now to talk more about that. Hi, Mr. Singh, good to see you. Good to see you. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, why did you wait two weeks to say you support the budget when nothing tangibly changed in the interim? Well, first off, we wanted to show that we were serious about looking at the budget to make sure what we had fought for was actually there. We want to confirm the things that we secured in the budget, like the school food program, the pharmacare, the dental care and diabetes medication and device coverage, as well as the renters protection fund. So when we were briefed about it, when we read it, we wanted to make sure that what we had fought for was actually showing up in the budget. And we were confident that that's there. Then we were concerned about certain things, and I raised those concerns, the disability benefit not being enough. And really, the clawbacks were particularly concerning to us. It could put a person living with disabilities in a worse off position, potentially, and that's completely wrong. And I raised that with the prime minister directly, and I said, this is wrong and this can't, this can't happen. And there was an openness to addressing those concerns. In addition, I raised concerns about the Jordan's principle not being met. And that's another area where I'm really concerned about the federal government made a commitment that if an Indigenous child needs care, that the care should be delivered first, jurisdiction worked out afterwards. Well, the federal government's missing that requirement almost 70% of the time, which is a very serious concern. So I raised that with the Prime Minister, and I heard some openness to addressing that. After hearing those concerns being addressed, or an openness to addressing them, I've said now we are prepared to support. So your support, your, your, your support is essentially contingent on an openness from the government? Like, there are lots of things the government has appeared open to which it has not followed through on. Uh, particularly, let's take the example of the disability benefit. It is horrifyingly low, according to advocates, right? $200 a month when they set expectations that it would bring people out of poverty. How can you support a budget that does that just because the prime minister sounds open to addressing a concern? Well, let's be clear. We, we agree that with the advocates, if this was an NDP government, we wouldn't allow for this to happen. We would never have done this. This is what the liberals have done. And we are going to continue to attack them, put pressure on them to improve this. They have not shown a willingness to improve the amount. And we think they're wrong. And so we'll continue to mount pressure on them. We'll continue to raise our concerns. We'll continue to fight back. Often with this government, what, what we've seen, well, often what we've seen is right now, dental care is a great example. It's being rolled out right now. There were many times on this journey where the Liberals said no. They voted against it two, twice in the past. They said it couldn't happen. They couldn't deliver it. Now seniors are receiving this care. This is testament to new Democrats persevering, fighting for people and delivering. Similarly, with the disability benefit, we fought for that. No, the Liberals have failed. They haven't delivered what was expected. Like you put it, the advocates have said, this is not what we wanted. And on top of that, the advocates said, the, their criteria in terms of eligibility said, please, at a minimum, don't make it based on the disability tax credit. And that's exactly what the Liberals did. So we are concerned about that. We think that's a big problem. And we've addressed that. I've raised that directly with the prime minister. And I expect to see solutions. But you have something available to you that few others do. You have the power to actually sway the vote. Uh, the, the conservatives and the bloc were going to vote against. If you added your party's votes to that, the budget would be defeated. The government would go down. And that would be in parallel to how you describe this government. You have said Justin Trudeau is a failed leader who is bad for Canada. And yet you're not willing to actually vote in that manner. You are keeping them in power despite your concerns, despite saying something like that. Well, the facts are Canadians chose him as prime minister. What we're doing is using our power to get the most we can for people. And if we voted the, against the budget, it would be voting against free birth control for women, free diabetes medication and devices, 
the child care, the dental care, the renters protection fund, the protection for kids or the support for kids in school to get a nutritious meal. Those are things that we're gonna support. We fought for those, we want those to move forward. Pierre Polyev is against those things. He said right off the top, he would be removing the dental care program for seniors, despite having dental care paid for with a publicly funded program for most of his adult life. He would take away the diabetes medication and the devices coverage, which we know is not only gonna improve the life of people, save them money, but improve our healthcare system. So that's the difference between us and conservatives. We want this to move ahead. But we've raised some concerns and we're gonna to fight to make sure but that those are addressed. how do you reconcile telling Canadians on one hand, Justin Trudeau is a failed leader. That's your words, a failed leader who is bad for Canada. And on the other hand, essentially just telling them right now, Pierre Polyev, I think would be worse. So I'm gonna just support the budget and not make sure that they get toppled. Well, it's, it's not, that's not the frame at all. That I, what I'm putting forward is that on their own, the Liberals would have done none of this. They wouldn't have done these things. They are absolutely failed in terms of what they've achieved in the past number of years. We have forced them to do in two years uh, significant things for people. The pharmacare, the childcare legislation, the dental care. These are things we forced them to do. If we were not there, they wouldn't have done them. And we've noticed they don't have the urgency to respond to people's needs. When we talk about grocery prices, they allowed grocery prices to exceed general inflation for two years before then they started making announcements and still have not yet taken concrete action until we forced them to bring in things like improvements to the Competition Bureau, more strings attached or more teeth attached to legislation to give more power. Do you think power. it's you that forced them or public outcry that forced them? Oh, because we absolutely forced them. There's no question about it. The, their approach was, on their own, was to call the CEOs and ask them nicely to lower their prices. And then Champagne then said, come out and check out. Minister Champagne said, look at flyers, grocery flyers. Prices are coming down. And then said, you know what, I actually don't know if they're coming down. That was the Liberals' approach until we forced them to bring in concrete legislation what's to give more protection. I mean, as, even, as a result, if, even if we take that at face value, prices are still terrible oh, at, they at the are. grocery store. Yeah, well, so again, the changes have come in just now, you're so they keeping impact. A, but you're keeping a government in power that is presiding over that. Like, you alone are responsible for keeping them in power and calling him a failed leader. Well, I mean, I think that's not, that's not the fair way to look at this. The scenario is we're forcing them to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. Their decisions are their decisions. Their failures are their failures. We're using our power to force them to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. The fact that the Liberals are failing people, that's for the Liberals to answer. If I was Prime Minister, I would take responsibility. I would own that. I'm not Prime Minister. Right now, Justin Trudeau is. And if he fails to bring in the sufficient amount for disability people, disability benefits for those people, he is failing those people. I'm saying that it should be much higher, and I would make and, it higher if I was in power. And look, I understand that those questions on their policies should be directed at them, and believe me, they get those questions <laughs> for sure. Of course. But in the case, for example, of the disability benefit, you had two weeks. What does it say that you weren't able to force any of those changes? And ultimately, if you don't, what is the effectiveness of the agreement that you have in place? He's a failed leader, according to you. He's not doing the things that you wanted on for the most vulnerable Canadians. Like, what's the point? Uh, it shows that he's out of touch. It's evidence that but the Liberals... doesn't it show that you are too? No, it shows the Liberals are out of touch because it is the Liberals that are in power. The Liberals are the ones that are calling the shots. We're using our 25 MPs. The Liberals have far more MPs. They're in power. They won the election. We are forcing them to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. We brought in dental care. We brought in pharmacare. We're making people's lives better with the power that we have. The Liberals don't believe that they can actually make people's lives better. They continue to act as if they don't have the power to change things. They want to just cruise by. They have no urgency. We're forcing them to do things. They'll, become, they'll come a time when there's an election. And I'll put to Canadians, look at how out of touch Justin Trudeau was as Prime Minister, how disconnected he was from the struggles you're going through. We fought and forced them to do things that made your life better, but give us the opportunity to be in power and imagine what we could do together. I have to ask you the blunt political question. I just have time for one more, sure. which is that people will say, you're not willing to take the step of voting against them or forcing an election because you'd lose uh, and you'd lose big in the next election. I looked at three separate polls. Angus Reid had you at 19 percent, Abacus at 17, Nanos at 16. Your fundraising is 6.8 million compared to 35 million for the Conservatives, 15.6 to the Liberals. Are you just not forcing an election because you don't think you can win? We're going to have an election and I'm ready to run as prime minister for this country. Uh, until then, I'm going to squeeze as much as I can from this government to make sure people get relief. But then could be I want to see the job. I want to see the job done for the dental care. I want to see it rolled out. I want to see seniors to get it. I want to see them start accessing the program. And then people can make a choice: Do they want to keep the dental care program, 
or not. Once they see the benefits of it, I want people to make an informed choice. Then Pierre Polyev will take it away from you. I want to keep it and expand it. The people can make a choice on it. I want to see people get diabetes, medication and devices and free birth control. And then Canadians can choose. Do you want that to continue? Or do you want Pierre Polyev to take it away? Because we know Pierre Polyev, what he wants to do. He wants to cut pensions. He wants to cut EI. He wants to cut dental care, pharmacare. He wants to cut all those things. I want people to have an informed decision but they when they make their make choice. they could make that decision now. You could force that it's decision, not an decision now. You don't think any not of that's informed? You don't it's think, not, you don't think after don't nine have, years the, the Canadians don't, don't have, know what they're in for? No, with no, this no. Government? People don't know uh, the benefit of something that's not in there. Their diabetes medication is not covered right now. But Birth don't you think isn't they have a perception right of the government right now? No, I want people to make an informed decision around the benefit of these programs before Pierre Polyev proposes to cut them. I want people to see how does this improve your life. And then you can choose if you want Pierre Polyev to take that away. You want him to cut pensions, cut EI, and to cut these programs we brought fought for? People can make that choice once they see the benefit. I want to see people to actually benefit from these things and see how it changes their lives and reduces their costs, improves their health. And then people can choose what they want. They want to keep it or not. So I read there is no chance of you being responsible for an election happening before the, the date that's set out. A year Ultimately, and a half we now. see that the prime minister and the liberal government will call the election when they want. We're going to fight as hard as we can to get people as much help as possible. And, and Pierre Polyev wants to cut it all. Okay, I'm going to leave it on that note. Mr. Singh, thank you so much for coming into studio. I appreciate it. All right, gang, so what do you think? Is Jagmeet letting Canadians down again? 70% of Canadians want an election. The polls reflect this. Jagmeet is aware, but he's still doing nothing to help Canadians, guys. Like, now he's going to back this budget based on Trudeau's words, saying he's going to support some initiative that the NDP has coming up down the road. It doesn't sound good for Canadians, guys. We gotta get rid of Jagmeet, gotta get rid of Trudeau. We want this election. There's no doubt about that. My name's Aaron. This is Question Period Canada. Come and join one of the live broadcasts. We watch the Question Period Canada's today together all the time. Great chat room, fun community. Come join us. I think you'll like hanging out there. So like, subscribe, share, get notified, especially for the live shows. Check out one of the other videos we have floating around here. They're interesting. That's it. Thank you for watching this one. Boy, oh boy, do we need an election. We'll catch you next video. Thanks for watching this one.